Welcome, my name is Marco Muñiz. I'm going to talk about urgent partial order reduction for extended time automata. This is joint work with Kim, Marius, and Jiri. Extended time automata has been widely used for the formal verification of real-time systems, including fire alarm systems, drive-by-wire protocols, mobile sensor networks, among others. The reason why time automata has been chosen for these modeling tasks is because it provides a number of convenient features for modeling. It provides clocks, integer expression, arrays, broadcast channels, committed and urgent locations, and C-like functions. Let's see some examples of uh, extended time automata. Here we have a network with automaton A1 and A2. A1 has a real value uh, clock, X, A2 has Y, and there is a, const a clock constraint X is smaller or equal than three, which is uh, saying when this edge E1 can be taken. There is the integer variable I, that here is being decreased by 10. The semantics are given by a transition system and the states are of the form of location vectors, zones, and integer variables. A zone, like here, the one in the right, is a conjunction of clock constraints. Here we have all possible values for the clocks X and Y. If the edge E1 is taken, then the clock constraint, which is here in red, will be intersected with the zone and is going to take us to uh, this accessor. In a similar way, if E2 is taken, then it will lead to this accessor. There are committed locations. For example, here, note that if E1 is executed, then L uh, prime one, it belongs to the committed locations and by the semantics, what is gonna happen is that E3 has to be executed immediately and it's gonna disable this edge temporarily. There are broadcast channels. Uh, here we have a sender and then we have two receivers. Now we are going to be doing some uh, static analysis and then we have partial information, which means that there are two to a power of uh, n possible synchronizations for n receivers. Uh, this could be, for example, when E1 fires and the other are not ready to fire, or E1 and E3 uh, fire, or when all of them can synchronize. Here we have an example of um, uh, the implementation of a uh, a fire alarm system from a German company using extended time automata in the model checker UPAL. As we see, it has a number of components and it is very easy to model the system. However, there is a problem that the state space will grow exponentially because of in the number of components. This is known as the state explosion problem. And in this presentation, we are going to present a technique that is going to help in fighting the state explosion problem. Partial order reduction is a, a very well-known technique used to fight against the state explosion problem. In the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna use English sentences to give intuition, but in the case of some confusion, you can always refer to our paper where we have the formal definitions. One of the key concepts of partial order reduction is the independence of actions. Intuitively, two actions are independent if they do not disable each other and if they commute. In this example, we have that starting from S, by firing A1 and A2, we can reach the same state as firing A2 and A1. Another component of uh, partial order reduction using stop on sets is a uh, uh, function, st, mapping from states to 
set of actions. If we see in this example, the, we have here a, a portion of a transition system and the function st is going to guide the exploration, potentially yielding um, a smaller transition system. If this uh, reduction st satisfies these two conditions, r and w, then it will be uh, reachability preserving. Condition r says that a stubborn action must be executed before a goal state can be reached. And condition w says that stubborn actions uh, commute with non-stubborn actions. These two conditions will ensure that we preserve the goal states. What about partial or reduction for time systems? Well, there has not been much work in, in the area with uh, time systems. The main reason is that time is going to introduce dependencies among actions. As we see in this example, we have a network of two automata, A1 and A2, A1 resets clock X and A2 clock Y. By starting at a state L1, L2, where clocks are equal, by firing A1 and doing a delay, and then firing A2 and doing a delay, we arrive to a state where Y is smaller or equal than X. If we execute A2, a delay, and then A1, then we reach a state where X is smaller or equal than Y. So as we see here, they, these do not commute. And some authors, what I, they are doing, they are considering local time semantics to avoid this problem. And some other authors are going to um, consider an over approximation which could take, for example, the union of these two states. But we have a different approach. Our approach is uh, called urgent partial reduction for time systems. Uh, we have uh, implemented our theory in the case of um, discrete time petri nets and two uh, player games. Now we are implementing this in the case of extended time automata where we have to deal with symbolic states and a number of um, other um, features from extended time automata which increase the complexity. Our technique now extends uh, traditional partial reduction by adding these two conditions, set and D. Condition set says that if time can elapse, there will be no reduction. And condition D says that a stubborn action must be executed before a state which can delay can be reached. This will ensure that we preserve states which can delay. If we see the symbolic semantics of um, um, uh, time automaton, for example, in Jupal, we will see that by being in a, a state and executing a delay, we reach a state which cannot delay. Then there would be a discrete action, and then there would be, again, a delay. And now, in a state which cannot delay, there is the possibility that there exists a number of actions that will execute in this point in time. So in this fragment of the system, the time is not elapsing. And here is where we could use our uh, technique. We have um, the, the theorem that if these conditions are satisfied, then if a goal state can be reached in the original system, then a goal state can be reached in the reduced system. Thus, our approach is correct. In what follows, I would like to explain how have we implemented our theory in the context of extended time automata. Um, we had uh, to make a, a decision to what are actions in this context. Um, for us, actions are sets of edges. For example, in this, uh, uh, here we have a network of three um, automata, and there is a broadcast channel, an array of broadcast channels, and it could uh, 
yield the following set of actions. We have E1, where the, the sender uh, is alone, or we have E1 and E2, where there was a synchronization between uh, these two, or uh, the other possible cases, including the case where all these three edges have synchronized, and uh, we also have the edge E4. Now observe that if we add another component and there is another receiver, then the number of uh, possible actions is going to grow exponentially for this broadcast channel. So what we do is we only consider the, the maximal actions for the broadcast containing all possible synchronizations. So we are a little bit pessimistic, but we are um, conservative. Pessimistic because this could add, add more dependencies than there are uh, really are. Another optimization that we do is that if you consider this edge E1, and if we are in an urgent location, and if this guard was satisfied, then in order to execute E4, because x has to be greater or equal than 20, time has to elapse. And since we preserve states which uh, can delay, it is not necessary for us to add this edge in this point in time to the actions. So our implementation will be considering in this example only this set of actions. Once we have defined what are actions, we need to define when they are independent. For this, we defined a number of syntactic conditions. The first one says that the source locations of the actions have to be disjoint. Here we have a counter example, and we see that um, the action uh, E1 and E2 share the source. And if we execute E1, then E2 gets disabled. So this is not allowed. Second condition, address uh, committed locations. Uh, as we saw, if E1 fires here, then because of the semantics of committed locations, E2 will get disabled. So we have conditions that ensure that this cannot happen. Um, um, actions have a number of operations. For example, this one is updating this discrete variable, and this one here is reading the discrete variable i. We have a um, simple um, check that if actions are reading and writing um, the same uh, in the same variables, then we will then consider them as dependent. Um, as we have seen in a previous example, if we are in a zone, then by executing E1, we will go to this uh, uh, region. If we execute E2, we will go to this region, and this means that they disable each other. So what we, we do is we have a constraint on the shape of the zone to um, avoid these cases. Our constraint is uh, first taking the projection of the zone in the clocks involved. So this would be the projection of the zone in the clock X. And then we check that this projection has to be only one point. This is not the case, so this is not allowed. However, if we would have some uh, point or a line here, and we take the projection in x, this could be a point. And then this could be uh, our reduction could apply. We have a theorem that if uh, these syntactic conditions are satisfied, then the actions are semantically independent. Um, now I would like to show how do we compute a reduction ST in the context of extended time automata. For the first condition, set. Uh, if time can elapse, there, there is no reduction. So if time um, uh, cannot elapse, this is because a location is urgent, committed, or the invariant is stopping the time. Thus, if this is not happening, no location is urgent or committed, or time is not stopping, then time can elapse. And what we do is we will add all enabled actions in the stop on set, and thus there will be no reduction. For the second condition, 
uh, let's consider this uh, network. Here, let's assume it is urgent. Uh, and the reason is because uh, this location is urgent. This invariant is stopping the time. Now, a note that as long as these two edges, E1 or E2, are enabled, time cannot elapse. So what we need to do is to add either E1 or E2 to the stubborn set. And with this, we ensure that uh, we will uh, preserve delays which can delay. The next two conditions, which are standard for partial reduction, uh, are, for example, that we preserve goal states. So if this location L1 is a goal state, what we need to do is to add the action E1 to the stubborn set. Finally, for condition W, we have an algorithm that will ensure all conditions. First, what we need to do is we need to compute all reachable actions from AS, which uh, are reachable without doing delays. Then we uh, compute an initial stubborn set that is going to satisfy the conditions set, D, and R, as we have shown in the previous slides. And finally, we need to close this uh, set by doing the following. If there is an action in the stubborn set that is disabled, then we are going to add all actions which can enable it. And if there is an action which is enabled, then we are going to add all actions which are not independent, namely actions which can disable or which will not commute with it. Um, by doing this, uh, we have our theorem that if, if we compute um, a stubborn uh, set using our algorithm, then our reduction is reachability preserving, uh, namely that we preserve call states. We have um, implemented our algorithm in uh, Drupal, and we have executed it in a number of uh, real-world case studies. In this table, uh, here we have in these two columns the values of um, uh, doing the experiment without partial reduction. Uh, in here we have with partial or reduction. And these two columns are a ratio to compare obtained by dividing A by B. We have um, the fire alarm system, which has 13 sensors, 15, 17, up to 100 sensors. Uh, we have for the system three queries. We observe that without partial reduction, the number of states is growing exponentially, and it goes out of memory from uh, 30 sensors. With partial reduction, it quites, uh, scales uh, quite well, and we see that we are able to verify uh, all the system in all, uh, for all queries, and we have exponential savings. We, uh, it is important uh, to say that for these two properties, it was crucial to only consider the reachable actions uh, without delays, that, that can be reached without doing delays. Otherwise, uh, this won't be in the, uh, seen as independent. We have other examples. Um, in, in, in this uh, case, uh, secure ride sharing, it's from six to nine uh, components, uh, two properties. Then we observe that uh, there was no reduction in this case. And the, the speed is about uh, twice as slow. So there is an overhead doing the partial reduction. For uh, deadlock, we observe that there is some reduction and that without reduction, it goes out of memory, uh, while with partial reduction, we are able to verify one bigger instance. Then we have uh, other two case studies where there was no reduction. Uh, in one case, the overhead was about 50%, uh, twice as slow. And on the other case, uh, the overhead was almost 
silent. Um, it's also important to note that we know that these case studies have uh, in independences that, that unfortunately our stat static uh, analysis was not able to catch. Uh, finally, we would like to say that we have implemented an urgent partial or reduction technique for extended time automata. This has been implemented in Drupal. We have a very simple uh, but fast static analysis. Um, we have very strong constraints on the shapes of the zones, but nevertheless, we have encouraging experimental results. For future work, of course, we would like to improve our static analysis. We would like to relax the constraints that we have uh, on the shape of the zones, and we would also like to extend our theory to other formalisms, including um, time games and price time automata. Okay, thank you for your attention.